Chemistry of 12th grade, chapter 1, section 1. Compounds in aqueous solutions. So first of all, compounds in chemistry can be either molecular or ionic compounds. In aqueous solutions means you dissolve these compounds, molecular or ionic, in water to form the aqueous solutions. So aqueous means water has been used as the solvent in the solution. When you dissolve these compounds, molecular or ionic, in water, they behave differently. For example, ionic compounds dissociate in water. Dissociation means the process in which ions of an ionic compound separate uh, from each other when they dissolve in water. Whereas some molecular compounds ionize instead of dissociation. They ionize to form ions. That is a different process than dissociation. For a 12th grade student, it is highly important to distinguish between ionic and molecular compounds because the Wizari mostly asks about the ionic compounds that can dissociate or molecular compounds that can ionize. So how do we know whether a chemical compound, a certain chemical compound, is molecular compound or ionic compound? Here is the thing. There is a simple way, an easy way, to, to know this, to be uh, sure about whether the chemical compound is molecular or ionic. Here I have listed 10 most reactive nonmetal elements that mostly covalently bond together to form molecular compounds. So if the composition of a, a compound uh, was like this, was, uh, let me say, contained elements that were in this table, we can call the compound molecular compound. For example, HCl is a molecular compound because here I have H and Cl is right here. HBr is also a molecular compound because here I have H again and Br. So both the elements in HBr compound are here among these 10 elements, H and Br. Ethanol, C2H5OH, is also a molecular compound. Why? Because um, the composition of ethanol is carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. So we have all the three elements in here. That's why ethanol also is a molecular compound. You can try this for all molecular compounds. You can use this table as your standard to measure or to, to compare all the other compounds with this. If a compound contains some elements and all the elements were here, you can say the compound is molecular. Either that, the compound is ionic. For example, here we have NaCl. NaCl contains two elements, Na and Cl. Let us check this compound with the table. I have Cl here, but I don't have Na. There's no Na among these 10 elements. Therefore, NaCl is an ionic compound. Why? Because Na is not one of the elements that are listed here. Therefore, it makes the compound ionic. Calcium carbonate, CaCO3. So there are three elements in this, in this composition. So oxygen, it is here, carbon, it is here, but we cannot see calcium among these 10 elements. Therefore, calcium makes the whole compound ionic. Lithium phosphate, again, there is no lithium among these 10 elements. It is ionic. Magnesium chloride, no magnesium here, so it is ionic again. Ionic compounds can be classified into two groups. 
they are either salts or bases. How do I know whether the ionic compound is salt or a base? There's again a simple way to know this clearly. If the ionic compound contains an OH group, hydroxide group, the compound is considered as a base. Either that, it is a salt. For example, NaOH. O is here, H is here. There's no Na, no Na. So the compound is ionic, first step. Secondly, is there OH? Yeah, there's OH in the compound. So this OH makes the ionic compound a base. Lithium hydroxide, there's O, there's H, but there's no Li, lithium. We can see lithium here among these elements. Therefore, LiOH is an ionic compound and it belongs to the bases. Why? Because it contains an OH group. Do this for the rest of these compounds. So here I've written some, some, some compounds like practice to, to check the, the comprehension whether we understood or not. RBOH, rubidium hydroxide. Rubidium hydroxide, there's O and there's H, but there's no RB, rubidium element. So the compound is ionic compound, in which class there is OH, therefore it is base, so easy. HS, H2S, hydrosulfuric acid there's H and there's S so H2S is a molecular compound H2O H and O there's H and there's O so H2O is a molecular compound K2CO3 calcium sorry potassium carbonate K is potassium carbon and oxygen. There is carbon and oxygen, but there's not potassium. Therefore, this compound is, this compound is ionic compound. And because there's not OH, so it is ionic, ionic and salt. If an ionic compound is not base, it is salt. So simple. Potassium phosphate, there's P, <laughs> there's P, sorry, there's oxygen, but there's, na there's no K. Therefore, the compound is, is ionic compound. The class of the ionic compound is again salt because there's not OH. Ammonium, NH3, there is N and there's hydrogen. Therefore, ammonia is molecular, molecular compound. Citrontium hydroxide. There is O, there is H, but there's, net, there's no SR. So it is ionic. In which class? Base. Why? Because there is an OH. N2O5, there is N and there's O, therefore N2O5 is molecular. So that's how we exactly and clearly distinguish between the uh, compounds and that's how we classify compounds into molecular, ionic, and we again reclassify ionic compounds into bases and salts. Hope you enjoyed the video. Try to uh, watch the other videos that I upload in the next days.